Hello and welcome to Culture Shop. In this edition, we're telling stories. How your collection can influence your product selection. And beg, steal, borrow and recycle. How some simple but effective display techniques can link your shop to your collection. It's culture in a shop. It's Culture Shop. So my name is Helen Antrobus and I'm the Business Development Officer at the People's History Museum. Uh, the People's History Museum tells the story of ideas worth fighting for with the home of democracy of the last 200 years. I love, I love visual merchandising. And this is our grafters table, this is our really cheap table which we love because we had very, very limited resources to create a table that would celebrate grafters which is all about industrial workers. So we got these baskets and these pieces of slate from Wilkinson's um, they were so cheap. Visual merchandising. Visual merchandising to me is a mixture of both art and science. The science comes in the logical bit, which is the number crunching bit. That's using your space correctly, identifying your range and the size of the range and the depth of the range correctly on the shop floor, and also making sure that those products convert into sales quickly and turn very fast so that you get the maximum profit out of your retail space. The art is doing it in a way that it looks good, it feels right to the brand and to the visitor attraction. We have these coal buckets which we uh, geniusly filled with, with our own coal. <laughs> we have our miner's lamp with our worker being there which just sort of balances out the more serious and more kind of academic stuff that's on the table which is things like um, the book to go with the exhibition, in loving memory of work, stuff like that. So we were really proud of this table because it, it cost us about £30 to get everything together and to create it. We were really happy with it. Although there is a fight going on as to who gets the miner's lamp after the exhibition's finished. So we are in the lucky position that the museum is closed to the public on Mondays, which has led to Mondays becoming a regular visual merchandising session in the shop. It's quite a luxury to have, and not one that I think I've ever experienced before. I'm Charles McKenzie, I'm the commercial manager at the Jeffrey Museum, but it does allow us to make quite dramatic changes on a very regular basis. And at the moment, uh, we have a special exhibition of sorts on. So it's a retail pop-up done with Mini Moderns, who are home res brands. It also ties in really well with our period rooms, because they feel is very sympathetic to our 1960s room. In fact, they've told us that their own living room very closely resembles one of our galleries. So this is a really sympathetic brand and it also means that we have something of interest at the shop on top of our standard uh, product lines which entices those customers in and gives us something to shout about but does not involve us having to do a large amount of investment into stock. They're also great because they're guys who really understand the principles of visual merchandising. We actually left them to set this all up by themselves. I came back and found that they have applied all of the retail visual merchandising rules. So you'll see things are facing in multiple directions. They're done by colour and range, and they have used nice grid systems to lay everything out to make it all visible, accessible, and very shoppable. Coordination is all about telling a story. And you want to engage with the customer and to let them understand about the story that you're telling. So that story should be clear. The story could be about the venue. It could be about a historical moment in time. It could be about an exhibition that you're running. It could be about an artist. It could be about a trend, you know, mid-century furniture and the styling that's on trend right at this moment. It could be about price. A story can be about anything, but you must tell the story clearly. Oops. Okay, so I'm Rosie Ripley, the retail manager at Hepworth Wakefield. Visual merchandising plays a very important role for us right from the planning stages. When we planned the Martin Parr range, we first of all looked at colour as our key points, starting points, because we knew it had to have a massive visual impact. It was going to be in the foyer area. So that was our starting point for a lot of the products, was the colour range that we were going to use. And that the visual merchandising then fed into what products we would produce. So we always try and tell a story, we always try to have a point of sale um, about the artist or about the collection or the maker 
on display and tell a story that way and then using a colour palette to bring everything together. When we were planning the product um, range for the PAR exhibition, we clearly had uh, products for the complete culture, which were local, ethical, um, kind of kitchenalia products. And then for the trendy vanguards, we brought in a commission with our local brewery to do a rhubarb beer. So the beer was brewed at Osset Brewery, so our local brewery. We've worked with them in the past. When we opened the gallery, they did a director's um, beer for us. So it was a perfect opportunity for them to do a rhubarb IPA with local Yorkshire rhubarb. We did, as opposed to the catalogue, we also did a zine. So it was about affordable um, publication for that age range. And there was, yeah, it was very distinct products for the different categories of audience and it definitely helped our sales and brought in that audience. So decide on the story, pick the product that fits that story and then set it all within the right setting. So to help you to create the story, one of the key things is how should that story be told and what fixtures should it be told on? So for example, if you are in a school museum, why not show the product on an old desk and a beautiful chair with chalkboards, with handwriting? That evokes a story, a time, a way of life, and it helps to exaggerate the look of the merchandise. If, however, you're in a very contemporary, sleek, crisp museum, and you've got modern art and modern pieces of sculpture, then obviously a white, high-gloss podium, clean, simple space around it, clean lines, suits that product far more. So what you want to do is get the right stock, in the right space at the right time, on the right furniture, and present it in the right way to tell that story. When you're building a story, I often find that there's one key product that is my starting point. And that's often a patterned item, an item of some significance, an item with a piece of detail. So for example, it may be an art print with some lovely colours in it. It might be a cushion or a textile with a beautiful pattern on it. Or it may be a simple product, it may be a simple hand-painted item. <laughs> So with Fiji and, and the uh, geometric designs uh, which are intrinsic to the craft items, uh, really with developing the range, which, which is quite, quite a small range but quite a focused range um, of postcards and a notebook, we really worked with one particular item here which was the lead image on the calendar of events which was the Fijian, um, it's like a wedding, wedding attire. So the, it's a dress made of bark cloth. Dress is pulled out, it's one long piece of bark cloth basically, which concertinas up into a, a really, really beautiful dress. So we use that lovely graphic image as a wrap round on a notebook using the, one of the exhibition colors on the inside flap, but also produced it as a postcard. And the postcard image is actually, we've only been open about a week, but it's obviously proving to be a key image. Um, and people have really latched onto that beautiful, simple pattern uh, and uh, it's really worked well for us. Once you've got that item, that item then gives you clues as to what else could sit with it in terms of the colour, in terms of the styling and in just in terms of the general look and feel of that merchandise. Once you've got that starting point, it then makes it easier to go and build your story. <laughs> So to tie in with the geometric range and the uh, des design, the um, geometric patterning for Fiji, decided to try a new thing for us. Got a couple of rugs in, uh, which I thought really reflected the whole design ethic of our Fiji show. So if we move on to the brought in craft items for Fiji, the products which which are made, um, which were actually made in Fiji and brought across especially for us, which really feature these lovely earthy tones, these lovely geometric patterns of um, traditional Fijian design. So the bark cloth, um, which have been made into lovely mats, um, and we're selling them really, really well at the moment. So everyone is unique, everyone is different, 
so people can really take home a piece of Fiji if they don't think they can get there, really take a piece of Fiji home with them. So various sizes of those. Also some really lovely bags, beautifully made. Um, and again, a traditional Fijian craftware. Alongside with the fans in three sizes, some contemporary products, some lovely natural wooden bowls, which really work well with the product as well. And moving on to our contemporary homeware, this is our Viva range from Cubic, again, which really fits the, you get this lovely kind of contemporary feel with the geometric designs, uh, which really feature in, in the Fijian graphic. I think the strength of our shop is definitely that it fits in with the brand of the gallery. Um, also the location, we're moving that outside of the shop space which is a bit secluded to one side. Um, so it's kind of a first impression for the visitor when they come in. And I think the buying into the exhibition, some of that has been really positive. Um, it ties into the exhibitions and the collection displays. I'd make the analogy here, which has a lot of resonance with a lot of museum um, directors and curators, in the same way that they curate and edit the collections which they put out on display with all the marvellous objects. In a similar way, that's partly what a buyer, a good buyer, is doing in the shop. They're editing and curating the selection which they put together and which they present to their customers to encourage them to buy. So having that good category mix and your price point mix, it's also about the range appeal as well. So thinking about um, developing your ranges and which ranges are targeted at which customers, what type of visitors. Coming up next time, visitors, who need them? We look at visitor types, how to spot them and what they want from your shop. And have you seen this woman? We track down the lovely Julia to ask, is there a perfect customer? Plus, how to turn browsers into buyers. That's all on the next edition of Culture Shop. See you then. Take care.